Have you or someone you know had a prophetic dream before? That's what we're going to talk about today on the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. My name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. And the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast is all about faith, spirituality, and the realm of the paranormal all around us. Each day on this podcast, we have a very open-minded look at those elements of our lives while keeping the utmost respect to all faiths, walks of life, races, religions, orientations, and peoples. So just know that we are here in love and light, and I hope you guys enjoy today's broadcast. So as we get into it, we're going to talk about um, the dreaming now, many cultures have uh, their version of dreaming and different lores and legends of what dreams really are. Uh, the Aborigines in Australia have what is called the dream time or the dreaming. Uh, they do different ceremonies to remember when creation was created by their God. And uh, if you look into those mythologies, it's absolutely incredible, I think. Uh, because we don't understand a lot about dreaming. Dreaming is not uh, just a brain thing, uh, but it also includes our brain. Dreaming is something that we feel, we taste, we touch, we see. By all intents and purposes, it's real to us at the time we are experiencing it. Um, dreaming also seemingly happens in real time sometimes, and then in uh, a different type of timetable where we warp between places uh, other times. So... With that said, uh, we're going to just have a really open conversation about dreaming today. I've had dreams my whole life, uh, dreams of what I consider to be the prophetic uh, that I never saw. I've had dreams that I didn't want to believe were prophetic that turned out to happen three days later. Um, so I don't have a good way to determine if you think this is an episode where you're going to find out if your dreams are prophetic or not, um, then this is probably not the episode for you because I personally have not experienced where I can tell the difference between my own psyche telling me what my operating system is running at and when I'm receiving an actual download. Um, the only difference I've noticed is that there is a feeling associated when I have what I would consider a prophetic dream. I had a dream um, at the beginning of this year that my largest contract called me into the office and, and let me go with that contract. And uh, in the dream, I was so upset about it. I was so worried um, and just in panic mode. And I woke up with that feeling and that feeling continued through the day. I tried to suppress it. It wasn't just fear. It was almost like a gut feeling of knowing. And so I moved into the day with that gut feeling and over the next three days through the weekend, um, you know, tried to suppress that gut feeling again, not a fear, but a gut feeling. Um, and on that Monday I was actually called into the office at that contract and cut from that contract. I was given, uh, you know, uh, some time to wrap it up. Um, but still it was just, it was, it was wild that it happened like that. Um, I've also had dreams that I have a lot of fear from and continue to pray against, uh, things about my health, things about, uh, my finances, things about, uh, people coming against me, you know, um, which some of that stuff is, is definitely a psyche thing because, it's stuff I've worried about in real life, and therefore uh, it manifests in my psyche in my dream. And then uh, it's a what I would call a health check on my psyche or on my operating system. We've talked about the four types of yoga, building the karmic footprint of your life. Um, and that's a really good way to check your health of your operating system within your life. And mine is not in great uh, balance by the way, but it is repairing. And I'm going to talk today how it went from recurring demonic dreams to now recurring dreams that have the same type of theme, but rather than the staircases, if you watch my silent hill dream series, 
talked about a staircase where it would descend down into the pits of hell, essentially. Uh, and it was accompanied by this horrible feeling of loss and uh, separation. And now those dreams have turned to, I am purchasing this house that is older and needs work and has actually been built on multiple times. So there's different parts of the house, even though it makes up one house and recurring for several nights in a row. And by several, I mean, probably eight or even 10, um, over the last several months I've experienced where there's a part of this house that is this part that excites me and it's beautiful, but it's older and maybe it wasn't built as well as it should have been. And I get to go into that part of the house with a staircase going up this time. So if you if you remember my Silent Hill Dream series, uh, it was it was dark and demonic, and it happened for the better part of ten years. And so now I get to go up the staircase rather than down the staircase, and this is fascinating to me. Um, what it means a hundred percent, I can't tell you, but I do know that one surface meaning that I just gleaned from it is everything in my operating system before, even though I was following, you know, good church doctrine, all of these things, you know, I was raised a Christian evangelical, uh, and Methodist, um, you know, was essentially leading me deeper into depression, despair, and by all intents and purposes, my own hell. And so with that said, uh, as I, move into I've found all of these different parts that are kind of built together and I think that what that's representing for me is as I, I'm able to acquire this house this very large beautiful house that is old in my dreams and needs work uh, the staircases go up uh, I haven't found one in my dream where the staircase goes down, it, it, it goes up into ascension, into higher consciousness, into salvation. And again, an allegory of you have a house that's built in multiple different parts, uh, normally like three different parts, like, you know, the older part of the house, the newer, and then the one that was tried, tried to get built onto, but didn't really make sense how it was built. But again, all the staircases go up and I'm so excited about getting to work on this old house. And so last night I got to go up the staircase into a part of the house that was built on as a newer part of the house. And I might consider this the Christianity part of my message. Uh, it's probably the newer of what we study on here. We're also studying Hinduism and Buddhism, specifically in the traditions of the teachings of the Buddha and the teachings of Krishna, uh, which are by all intents and purposes, older systems um, uh, than what we would consider Christianity, especially modern Christianity. And as I get into this, uh, I will answer questions in a minute, guys, that I want to finish my story. I, I think that one of the representations of this for me is that I have an opportunity to repair some things that were done incorrectly with the Christian systems. And I don't say that in a proud manner or like I'm some sort of prophet or savior. That's not how I feel about it. But for me in my life, I get to acquire this beautiful old house that has multiple parts that have been built onto it. And I'm always going up into this part that's like a newer part. And it's really beautiful and it does fit with the rest of the house. But when I get up there last night, I got to go up into one of the ceiling tiles, which was a beautiful ceiling tile. And it was kind of like quilted almost with this beautiful design, like almost a sacred geometry design. And I opened it up and there was like a pipe up there and it was hissing and leaking with like water. And I ended up tightening the pipe and realizing, okay, the plumbing needs to be replaced up here. Um, and then I looked down into the wall, like how it was built. And instead of being built with like big two by fours, big old strong ones, uh, I was built with like these really thin ones that were like rounded on the edges and just real thin. And I thought, yeah, we got to, we're going to need to pull the sheetrock off and reinforce this and really go in and replace some of the old structures that were built into this. So you guys see where the allegories go in with this dream. Uh, today's episode, I just wanted to like deconstruct my dreams so you can do the same thing with yours because I can't tell you what's prophetic. You know, the way I tell what is authentic prophecy, what comes from the Lord is because it comes true. Um, and so obviously I've had some dreams like that, but obviously I've had some dreams that are not like that. 
Uh, I've had some dreams that I really hope are not like that too. Uh, so with that said, this is my house. This is my beautiful house that I'm getting to work on. And actually this is a haunted house that I found uh, or created on AI, um, after the house, uh, that appears in Loki. And I thought, um, it was a, a beautiful house, um, you know, put together and obviously you can tell different parts. And this is very similar to the type of house that I get to interact with in my dream. And so, Again, as I go through in my dream and I see different parts of this house, I see uh, that it's beautiful on the inside. It has treasures. Here's a bed with a bunch of treasures. Um, beautiful and old. And as we restore it in my dreams, it just comes to life. Uh, and this has a bed in it because I was talking about dreaming here. You can see here, even under the uh, under this table here, is like a window. Like, you know, that's kind of how my dream is. It's like all of these different weird little but beautiful places and nooks and crannies within this house and light is starting to come into this house. You know, the windows have been cleaned. We've, uh, we're, we're building this house together. And I think that's a representation of, of a, what we're doing here on this channel, but also B what's happening within me. And so, um, as I continue to dream these dreams, I cannot wait to see what uh, happens as we restore this house and as we continue to go up the staircase into the higher parts of the house what beauty might arise from that and part of how I gauge am I on the right path is when I was following I had my one religion I had my one faith my one frame of mind which was churchianity religiosity or what you might call evangelical Christianity and I believed it was my job to go out bring more people to understand Jesus the person of Jesus rather than introduce them to the Christ uh, I see the Christ in all of these different systems you know even the ancient ones that that we talk about like I see the Christ in Krishna I see the Christ in Buddha um, you know they're all talking about the one God and these are not like we've talked about extraterrestrial gods. Obviously, some of these have pantheons of those otherworldly gods. But, you know, all of these systems, from my understanding, as I learn about them, are speaking of a fractal god of gods, a spirit god of gods. The one that is truth, the one that is bathed in light, the one that no man has stood before, you know. And so that's what my understanding of God is. And when I've started to put all this together and I found Gnosticism, uh, we've read through the book of uh, the Gospel of Thomas together. We're going through Enoch together. I've found this beautiful, beautiful picture that is a fractal picture that fits together. Um, and I had a friend tell me the other day that, you know, people that put these philosophies together, they don't go together. And I, I beg to differ. I think that the authentic message of Jesus Christ, uh, works perfectly with the message of the Buddha and the Krishna. Um, and that the Christ energy is what is within all of those entities, all of those stories or mythologies, whatever you view them as. Um, and so this is coming from someone who is largely deconstructed from that evangelical Christian bent. Um, and, and respect to that, by the way, because we have a lot of those uh, people within our community. And I totally respect you. But my mission or goal is, guys, we've got a house now that has multiple different parts. Uh, three parts in my dream. Uh, obviously, by the Buddhism side of this, the Hindu side of this, and the Christian side of this. Uh, or Judeo-Christian, you know, kind of, we'll, we'll expand that. Uh, because I've studied a lot of Hebrew literature, a lot of, I even have a Bible over here that's all translated from the Hebrew roots of it. So I get probably more than a lot of people do about how these can all fit together in a beautiful way. And I think there's a doctrine going around right now that like in the end times, uh, there will be one world religion, you know. Um, and while I can see that happening like on a global scale, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I am trying to understand the common thread of truth within all religions rather than create a new one. That's not the point of what I'm doing here. The point of what I'm doing is whether you're Muslim or Hindu or Jewish or Christian or agnostic or atheist or any of the other world faiths, 
that we can all get along, love each other and see the truth in the other systems and see the, like, what could I learn? We met a, a beautiful, beautiful Hindu family uh, on vacation up in Taos. They took pictures with our dogs and everything. Uh, they brought their grandmother with them. You could tell they were traveling from overseas. Uh, they had all their stuff with them. They were on the square out there and they, they had never, I guess, seen a great Dane before. And so my dog Abel got to take pictures with them. And there was like this attraction between that family and us. And we just had a beautiful conversation, nothing real deep or anything, but just, you could tell there was a magnetism there. And unfortunately where I was just years ago in my walk of faith, I would have thought it was my job to save them rather than join them on their journey. And I think there is a definite, definite need for people to begin to join others on their journey rather than uh, avoid them or try to rescue them from something that they may not need rescuing from. And that's that's where my heart is, guys. This is a heart thing with me and a, and a, a pouring out of love. I have people in my life right now that want nothing to do with me that, that are even within my family that don't want to be around me, uh, because of the message I'm sharing, because it is a demonic message. It is the message of the antichrist or whatever. And if you believe that, then just know that I love you and know that I'm going to continue to bring this message because I believe it is one that is healing people. I believe it is one that is repairing old timelines ways of thinking about self that are so unhealthy to our everyday life. And when we look at this big house, this big, beautiful house that I'm talking about in my dreams, we all have access to enter that big, beautiful house. It's already there. That door is within us already. And we don't have to try to piece together, uh, you know, understandings rather than build a, an inner standing and that inner standing creates a beautiful picture a beautiful home that we can exist in while we're on this planet so let me grab a couple of comments here i had an epiphany this weekend mandy says awesome what's your epiphany annie logan good morning how are you doing jason what's up my brother optic x welcome um hope you guys are doing well this morning Catherine, thank you for being here uh, too inquisitive listening to interviews with Buddhist monks in Tibet. I realize that they speak exactly like Jesus. Yes, exactly. And we're going to look at some of the mythologies or the stories or the theories about Jesus in India as we move forward uh, with this podcast, uh, probably even next month. Uh, here we are on Halloween, and I want to talk about the portals opening. Why is Halloween uh, such a day where everybody says, you know, all unspeakable, whatever we are making a collective agreement, guys, we are co-creators of the universe. I believe definitely spiritually. And as we start to understand more about quantum realms, I think possibly even literally we are co-creators within this universe. Uh, and as we think, and as we act and as we feel, and as we wield energies and start to understand those in our life, we are actually building an operating system around us that others can agree with and begin to create realities around that. One of the collective realities, especially here in the U.S., we have Halloween. Everybody is in agreement now that the, the, the dead will walk, the zombies are out, the all the ghouls, all the, you know, you even hear all these reports on the news tonight about crime spikes and all this stuff. Well, why is that? Is there some spiritually inherent energy right now at Halloween? Possibly. But I propose on a surface level, at least just on the most basic spirituality principles, we are co-creating this opportunity for all these things to be unleashed on the earth. And I think that that is something that we don't need to sleep on. We need to understand that we are all creating the dream together, that you don't have control over the dream any further than the state you're in when you go to sleep. So if you go to sleep, why does the Bible say don't go to sleep on your anger? Because you're going to continue to manifest that anger in your sleep. But what it, what is going to happen is you're going to program into your subconscious the reality that you're agreeing upon. And I think this stuff goes much deeper than just receiving messages from the beyond. I think we are actually building our operating system when we sleep. We're building our psyche. 
And if you go to sleep with a smile on your face and a meditation in your heart and a gratitude and an expectation of good things, love and light, I believe that you'll see them maybe even starting the next day, maybe the next week or the next month or the next year, depending on how big or or grand or maybe how dark your operating system has gotten. It might take longer to get there. But for me, I know that I've been experiencing some dreams that are very intriguing to me. And originally, I thought they were about receiving an actual house. And I think now that they're more of an esoteric nature. And I might receive a house within all of this, too. That's one of the things I'm praying for. Uh, We live in a house right now that's just fine. But I do pray that I have a house that has some land and has a studio behind it and a place for me to work maybe even have some people that help me and work on this this thing together. Um, and so I think that the dreaming, uh, as, as like I said earlier, the Aborigines talk about, is a place where you can meet with destiny and you can design destiny and you can co-create destiny. Uh, I won't get into predestination here. That's a whole other can of worms. But uh, with that in mind, I think we have control over more than we want to think, especially within our own lives and what emanates from us. You know, the idea that the universe begins and ends with you, like, um, that's a crazy, crazy idea because we've been taught that we're all, you know, just cogs in a wheel. Well, if you think about, like, I literally have the power, the people that choose to spend time with me to affect their life, to affect what manifests in their life, the thoughts they have, how they view themselves. We've been taught too that like, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt them, you know, but like the things we say and do and feel and the energies we project around people are very important. There's a lot of things going around online about, oh, if you have the right vibration, you'll find the right people. But I propose that I have people in my life I love and they're going to get the vibration that I have. I have people in my life that they don't like the vibration. They don't resonate with it because they're on a much different vibration. And all that they're hearing is dissonance. They close down their mind. They close down their consciousness. And they just choose ignorance and avoidance rather than uh, like, hey, let me figure out what that's all about. And that's one of the things that I love about this thing that we're doing here is the beauty that we've created in this community and the agreements that we make together, the agreements to love each other, guys. That's, you know, if I have, if I speak in tongues and have prophetic utterances, but I have not loved, I have nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. It sounds like a Buddhist saying, right? No, it's, that's Jesus said that like, and we're going to look at a few things that Jesus said this morning too, that I think are, are really, uh, really interesting here. So, uh, let's see, uh, Roman Christianity is predicated up upon the assumption that Christ was teaching about the old Testament God. He wasn't teaching how to honor this. Uh, he was teaching how to honor the spark of the all that lives in us. Particle physics is also based on assumption, the mass, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I try not to speak too many sciencey terms on here cause I don't want to trigger you know, TikTok into uh, thinking that I'm a science channel. We're not. We're just speaking theory here, TikTok. Um, but with that said, like, yeah, he, we have this whole narrative within, especially the Roman Catholic Christianity, which, by the way, you all follow. If you go to a organized church today, Baptist, Methodist, um, Evangelical, Catholic non-denominational, whatever you're, you're following a system. If you read the King James or the NLT or the Christian standard Bible, if you have 66 books in your Bible, you are most likely following that system or some derivation of it. So with that said, um, in all love, you know, there is a narrative within that, that is really focused on making Jesus both a person and a divinity uh, and strips away the esoteric message. If you guys joined on my Sunday live stream, we're doing an esoteric reading of the Gospel of John. We're also going to be going through the Gnostic Gospels within this series. Every single Sunday, we're literally going to do Bible stuff like and re reimagine the Bible based on this method of reading it, which is just esoteric. Like 
Uh, let's not look at the time and the place and all of this stuff. Let's look at the universal message that is in this text. And that becomes a transcendental message where we can transcend our limitations and our limiting beliefs rather than building a system of dogma. We can build a system of philosophy, inward spiritual light, and an esoteric depth in the text. And uh, if you didn't watch yesterday's episode, it's over on my YouTube channel. You can find everything at cubkuker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. All the spiritual resources that are over there, guys. I do have some free ones coming very soon. I've been working on them. Um, and if you have not joined the team membership, we have an awesome team. Um, it is $9 a month today only. It's going up tomorrow, guys. I promised you that. If you have wanted in at $9 a month, you will not get in at $9 a month after this. Not even if you ask me. You won't get in. I have to be fair here. And the people that, that stepped up and found, you know, nine $1 bills in their pocket, you know, that's like one trip to Starbucks. Uh, I have to honor them and give them, I'm locking them in at that price. And so the team membership stands for Transcend, Elevate, Align, and Manifest. Uh, and with this membership, this isn't just a, Hey, I'm supporting Cub and what he's doing. You're literally going to get access to my deeper teachings on this actual method, the team method. This is a method. This is a philosophy an ideology, a, uh, a way of building your operating system that takes, if you guys like what I talk about here and you want to know how I come to all these understandings, this is it. And I'm going to teach you how to do the same thing in your own life with this how to love people, how do you transcend your limitations, elevate your consciousness, manifest your desired reality, and align yourself with love. That is like one of the most important things here, aligning yourself with love. And, um, you know, the world has a really skewed view of love, and I did for a long time. But that's one of the things I want to teach in this. Why is this behind a paywall? Why aren't you giving this for free? Well, I do give it for free here, guys. But I can't be as candid as I can behind the paywall because the paywall is off platform. Here I have to entertain. Here I have to speak in more parables. Over there I can be more direct and actually do manifesting and meditation sessions. And that's a big part of what you're going to get over there is actual coursework. Uh, not like, a, you know, sit down and write this down, but more of like the sessions with me. I don't do the sessions on here because they're just not popular. Nobody stops by to watch them. Uh, but you guys that want to go deeper, I get to like unpack how I actually meditate in the mornings. How do I come to these understandings? How do I start to put all these things together and build a new operating system for my life? Uh, and those are the cool things that we get to do over there. So if you want to grab that, Nine bucks a month right now before it goes up tomorrow. Today is October 31st, 2022. So mark my words, the price is changing tomorrow. Uh, thank you guys for your support in that, by the way, that have already joined. By the way, if you join with an email, you cannot change that email. So join with your work email. That's where you're going to get every communication, by the way. Uh, I reached out to the company. There's no way without canceling that. I had somebody say, uh, you know, oh, I want to change the email. Well, if you sign up with your work email, that's where you're going to get all the communication. So you'd have to cancel that and restart a new membership. Um, and so do that quickly if you want to change your email, if you're already in there. So um, just a PSA there. But so Matthew 13, 52. This is what I love about this because, uh, again, I just talked about these multiple parts of the house combining these these ancient philosophies and belief systems and, and religions and trying to understand the common thread that runs through them. Uh, this is Matthew thirteen fifty two. It says, He said to them, and this is Jesus talking, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. And I love this because, you know, it's talking about like if you get the old philosophies and the old systems, the new one goes with it. You don't have to burn one and try to lead people to the other. You you can add to it. And by the way, you can be a master, an ascended master by understanding mythology, ancient philosophies, ancient religions and systems of ascension and also understand the new message of Christ. Um, and it was 
for them at that time, a new message. You, we have to understand that they had systems of attaining God that were based on, you know, this, 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 and this. Now we can look at them today and understand that their dietary law was, was a healthy way of life. We can look at, um, their, the patterns that they did with the festivals and the seasons and understand that that's going to create a harmony with you in the earth. Uh, and then when you add the newer understanding of Christ, which I think was actually an older one coming back into the matrix, uh, that people had just forgotten about, uh, then you can begin to combine those things and, and you, you become a master at being able, you're at a party and somebody asks you like, you know, dude, do you think God is blah, blah, blah. And you're like, well, Hey, check this out. These people believe God, this, and these people believe this. And, and then here's what Christ said. And then, and here's, here's the common thread in all of this. So if we take that, this is how we can understand God. And you can understand that because you can experience him this way. So you guys see how I'm putting all this together. And even this verse is just a beautiful representation of like, build a bigger picture guys. Nobody wants to do the work. Nobody wants to take the old ways and the old understandings and actually add the new to them. You can't put new wine in an old wine skin, right? So get another wine skin. Uh, and what that means is like, you know, you don't put old oil in the new oil in your car. You know, you keep them both, right? Uh, or let's let's take this into the kitchen here. If you have fermented cabbage that would be sauerkraut you don't add the new cabbage to that if you're trying to make coleslaw you're going to have sour coleslaw so you preserve both and give everybody the option to maybe enjoy both right so just that's my german heritage there so um love me some sauerkraut then he told them for this reason every scribe who has been disciplined in the kingdom of heaven so uh kingdom of heaven here is Uranon, this is not the kingdom of God, this is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, perhaps the same as Oros, the sky by extension, heaven by implication, happiness, power, eternity, uh, specifically the gospel. So this is, again, by implication and extension, talking about happiness, power, and eternity. Uh, is like the homeowner who brings out of his storeroom, uh, and storeroom would just be like, say you have a bedroom with all these treasures in it. You've got like uh, a library or something. You're able to bring out all of these beautiful treasures, new, which means fresh, new, unused, or novel, as well as old, which means ancient, not new or recent. So, um, you know, well-used, well-worn. And what a beautiful place to be in, guys. Um, checking on the dogs here. What a beautiful place to be in because when we really understand the older and ancient systems of ascension, of attaining happiness, eternity, and we combine them with the new ones or what might be newer to our timelines, I think that there's a lot of beauty in that. And that's why I love Christ. I love the eternal Christ, the entity of Christ. Uh, there's so many people that argue about the timeline and was he divine? Was he this? Was he that? I don't even care, guys. I just care what his message was. How did he live? What did he tell me to do? And I love that entity and that spirit through that. I don't have to love a person because I don't know him. I haven't met him. And everybody that says you need a personal relationship with Jesus, my question for you is, where is he? Oh, he's within you. Well, then if he's within you, he's a spirit within you. And you can contact that universal spirit rather than trying to create in your head and manifest a person of Christ. Let's manifest and make contact with the spirit and the entity of Christ. The one that is, uh, has been here in all different timelines, has manifest himself in the matrix over and over and over to bring the way, the truth, and the life, which is not a religious system but an entity, a philosophy, a way of life, a way of aligning with love and transcending limitations based on service to others, rejection of the physical realms, you know, the things that we all want in life, uh, and being willing to give up anything to find authentic spiritual treasure. And I think that that's something that we can all remember today as we dream uh, dreaming doesn't just happen when you're asleep. You have this subconscious narrative going on all the time. 
And if we can begin to combine these ideas, we can build a beautiful house, I believe, collectively. And by the way, we start to see things that don't fit in the house. As in my dream, I saw things that were maybe broken or had not been well built that I need to go in and reconstruct. Doesn't mean that you're tearing anything down. I want to tear down your friends that have, you know, philosophies that don't lead to life. But you can help them rebuild, help them add to it, help them build a bigger picture, build a beautiful picture. And that's what we're doing for ourselves here. So Joseph Lopez, thank you for being here. Steffi, thank you for being here. Deannon, uh, found you on YouTube. Um, let's see. Uh, and Living It will join uh, tomorrow and get paid. Uh, I adore your content and messages. Thank you, Dan, and thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Um, and then let's see. Definitely by asking the right questions, Annie says, yes, absolutely. Thank you guys for the gifts, by the way. So with that said, if you guys are watching on Facebook later on, on the rebroadcast, you can give stars on Facebook. That really helps me uh, with my monthly earnings so that I can continue to do this full time. You can also consider joining the membership. Uh, or anything you buy through the spiritual resource shop or the book club on my website, I get a little bit of a kickback for that as well. So uh, always, always the best way is just directly through the PayPal link. If you want to just uh, hook me up and give a gift, that's a great way to do it. Um, so I have that on there too. That runs through my company, through my LLC. This is not a nonprofit or anything, guys. I'm doing this legit, legitimately as a business. Uh, so everything is taken care of with that. I have an accountant. We do all the tax stuff, all of that. So you don't have to worry about that. Some of these people that are like, give us friends and family. Like, I don't do that guys. This is a part of my business. This is my business. So, um, just understand I do this full time by choice. I've given up everything that I had to build a better house, build a more beautiful house. And I believe God's given me a much bigger one, a much more beautiful picture here by adopting these philosophies and stepping into this. So I hope you guys are continually willing to do that in your own life. Uh, over the coming months, as we unpack more of these philosophies and these ancient ideas, and we adopt new ones too that are complementary and add beauty and texture to it, uh, that we're all willing to recreate the operating system that we dream within so that we can manifest the reality that we desire, the one that is aligned with the will of the Father, the kingdom of God within us. That's what I think this whole beautiful house is about. So I love you guys. I'm going to see you this afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for being here. God bless you, and I'll see you this afternoon. Like, comment, and subscribe to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. Love you guys. Peace.